sections 2.7 and 2.8, position vectors. In this section, we will introduce the concept of a position vector. It will be shown that this vector is of importance in formulating our Cartesian force vector directed between two points in space. So again, we're going to be operating in the Cartesian coordinate system and representing a force vector directed along a specific line. Here we see an awning held up by chains and we want to determine the forces. Again, we can see that these chains are not in the same plane, so we have to have a three-dimensional process as well. So far we've described force, but there's another dimension that's important in this process. What's the dimension and unit that might be important in this process? How about the length of the chains that we're observing? A position vector is defined as a fixed vector that locates a point in space relative to another point. So where our resultant forces, we were describing forces in units of newtons or pounds, in this case, the position vector r is going to be, have a dimension of length. The position vector is defined for example, r extends from coordinates a to b. Then we define the coordinate vectors in those places based on the relationship to a and b in the x, the y, and the z direction. This defines the points a and b in space relative to other points and forces that we may be concerned with. Again, we'll use the conventions of the i, j, and k directions relative to the x, y, and z axes. For a position vector directed from a to b, we'll designate this with the subscript r, subscript a, subscript b, r sub a to b, which tells us that it's directed from a to b and it's defined in space relative to its x positions at b and a, at y and a, and at z and a, giving us again i, j, and k components for the position in space. If a force is directed along a line, then we can represent the force vector in Cartesian coordinates by using a unit vector and the force's magnitude. To define this vector, we find the position vector R, A, B along the two points on that line, and we find the unit vectors describing the line's direction with regards to the coordinate system that we've been using so far, the X, Y, and Z coordinate systems and we can multiply the unit vector by the magnitude of the force. So to sum up, a position vector locates one point in space relative to another. The easiest way to formulate the components of a position vector is to determine the distance and direction that must be traveled along the x, y, and z directions, going from the tail to the head of the vector, or the arrow would be the head. A force F acting in the direction of a position vector R can be represented in Cartesian form if the unit vector of the position vector is determined and is multiplied by the magnitude of the force. Recall also that the force vector F has units of force and the position vector R has units of length.